preparing our hearts for the birth of Jesus. And uh, so I hope you enjoy our service today, and uh, blessings to all those who are, uh, are tuning in. Um, if you have any prayer requests or anything like that, uh, you can put them in the comments on the Facebook Live post. And we're going to start out our service today by singing, Great is Our Great is Thy Faith. Faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Uh, number 140. We have a note to symbol. Verse 1 and refrain. <laughs> Thank you. 
prayer this morning, and I wanted to um, give a couple. What did you have a double announcement? Oh, yes, it's not. Yes, we uh, do want to do the announcements. Let's do the announcements. Um, worship services uh, have been canceled at both churches on Ryan Colfax due to the pandemic. And uh, therefore, uh, every Sunday, you can tune into Facebook Live at 10 a.m. Uh, at each one of the church's uh, websites. We're recording here at Colfax, and we'll be broadcasting here from Colfax, and maybe occasionally lighting a candle over at, at Audubon Sanctuary uh, a couple of times this um, season. But um, we will, uh, you can find the service on either the Audubon United Methodist Church Lebanon website or the uh, Colfax United Methodist Church Indiana website. And uh, that's uh, the first announcement. We do need uh, two volunteers uh, or families that would like to light an Advent candle. Um, you can, as you've seen this morning, we decided that it was just easier to light it at the church. But we would like to have a couple of times uh, to light the Advent candle at, um, at the church at Otterbein. Uh, it has been very nicely decorated, I've uh, noticed this past Friday for, for the holiday season, just like we decorated here. And so that would be very nice to have a couple of Sundays where uh, we could uh, film from Otterbein and a couple of Sundays here. And, um, and if you film at Otterbein, then you would need to have your own camera with your own Facebook Live, and I believe there's a way we can tap it in uh, if we choose to do that. Or we can do all of them here if, if uh, that's the easier thing to do. But uh, it would be nice to have both sanctuaries represented. Um, and uh, we also need volunteers for um, reading a scripture and lighting, well, reading a scripture from home on uh, the Candles and Carols service, uh, reading the scripture and singing a carol. And we were talking and thinking maybe that would be good if um, it was recorded ahead of time. And you were able to get uh, your recording to uh, Craig Bowen, and he would edit it all together. Um, I will get out what the carols are and the scripture readings and uh, see if we can get some volunteers pretty quickly because uh, we have four weeks and then Christmas Eve is here. So we'll see if we can get that accomplished. That would be a fun thing to be able to watch on Christmas Eve and uh, being able to record it ahead of time with uh, work with people's schedules, people's holiday schedules. So um, every, I, as my understanding, still every uh, Monday at 9 a.m. there are a group of ladies and gentlemen, sometimes too, I think, that are making noodles. And if you want any noodles, they're $3 a bag. If you want to come and help make noodles, I've helped a couple of times, it's fun. It's at 9 a.m. here at Colfax United Methodist Church, um, downstairs actually. And uh, holiday food boxes have been gathered. And in fact, I see all of uh, some of the food over here. And um, if you want to donate to a grocery store gift card to give uh, to folks, uh, you can mail that to uh, Lane Bowen at 6961 South Country Road, County Road, 750 West, Colfax, Indiana, 46035. And that's where you also would mail your uh, tithes and your givings, um, your offerings as well to that address. And uh, milk money over at uh, Otterbein, um, there are donations given to a um, ministry called Love Inc. that provides milk products, dairy products to uh, folks uh, who come for help. And uh, if you'd like to a give to that, then you can send that to uh, Tom Temple with Love Inc. in in the uh, in your memo. Always put in the memo what you like for things to go toward, and uh, his address will be later on in the offering. Um, what does this say? Funds. The Heifer Project. Yes. Um, if you're familiar with the the Heifer Project, it's uh, to provide an animal for a family. And uh, in, in cultures where that is very much a part of their livelihood. And if you would like to donate to 
give um, an animal um, just any amount and we'll, they'll be able to get whatever that they would like. You can uh, send that to Tom Temple as well uh, with Heifer Project in the memo uh, at his address, which we'll, you can look for it later in the, uh, in the service where it says offerings. Or you can mail it to, to Water by United Methodist Church as well. Uh, keep in touch with one another during this time, uh, it, during the pandemic. It's, I know we're socially distancing, but let us not let anybody be socially isolated. So that's just a reminder to give people a call, send people a card, and help them know, especially in the winter time, they can't get out very well, that, it's, uh, that they're not alone. It's supposed to snow this next couple of days, I believe. And what else do we that's have? It. I believe that's it. We believe that's it. Now it's prayer time updates? Um, now is, yep. Sure enough. <laughs> um, I wanted to give you some updates. Um, Sandy, uh, Joe's daughter, is has had her surgery last Wednesday and is doing doing better. And well, she's, she's recovering and is in some pain, I'm understanding. But, She's still uh, in need of your prayers as she recovers from her surgery. Um, I have uh, some good news about uh, Jamie. Uh, she was uh, had brain surgery, I believe, this past week, and uh, she is awake off of her ventilator, um, can answer simple questions, a little bit confused, but uh, will respond when you, you talk to her, so she's coming around. Uh, Kay uh, had surgery. We had... Uh, several people at Audubon had surgery on, on the same day, and Kay Sampson had surgery as well. And uh, she is uh, going to be coming home on rehab, I think is what she told me. And uh, she may be home, she may be still in the hospital. The last time I talked to her, um, she was staying in the hospital a little longer than she initially thought, and is going to be coming home on therapy. And uh, David Budd is home from his surgery. And uh, he had uh, surgery on his heart, had a pacemaker put in, but he needs to have some valves fixed. So pray for him during this month. Uh, he um, can't go back for a month to have that fixed. And he needs to take it easy. So be in prayer for David Bennett. And I'm trying to uh, make sure that uh, both churches get our prayer, um, prayer requests. And um, so I want you to make be aware of that to be looking for them and, uh, and be in prayer for, for folks. And you can also put a prayer request right there in the memo and we'll get uh, added to the others that go out. Um, so I will offer a pastoral prayer this morning and then we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Dear Lord, we lift up to you each member of each of these churches, each person who may be watching today, and uh, you know, you always know what's going on in each and every one of our lives, Lord. And uh, I just lift up to you our communities, the people in our church, the people who are watching online, uh, which makes the community very large, because uh, somebody could be watching from anywhere. And uh, just lift each and every person up to you, and we know that you are already working for good in everything and that you bring good out of bad situations all the time. So help us work with you and trust in you and um, have hope. Hope, this is the day we celebrate hope, Lord. Hope that things are going to get better than they are right now. And um, help us find the good and the joy in the present moment, Lord. Uh, it's never all bad in any moment. And um, even in the middle of the pandemic. And we just ask your blessing on all of the uh, people who have been lifted up in prayer. And prompt us, Lord, not only to pray for one another, but to be present for one another. That we could be the answer that you want for this person. That that an answer to some person's prayer could very well involve something that we do or we say. And may we always be open, Lord, to 
to being used by you, to being partners. I prefer to say we are partners with you in all the good, Lord, that you are doing in this world. And we pray, Lord, when we ran out of words and uh, didn't know what to say, you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Isaiah 64, verses 1 through 9. This is what it says. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in their ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgress. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter, our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. A few years back, well, a couple years back, when I was down in southern Indiana, we had a class on um, for kids on Wednesday nights that they had been doing it at the school and the school couldn't do it anymore and and so the church started doing it on, on Wednesday night a small little town of about 160 people and uh, we started doing it and kept on doing it for 25 years by the time I got there but we would teach this class and we had games and things to play and stuff like that but we would take turns teaching the class teaching Bible to uh, Bible stories to the kids and uh, I would take my turn as well but these were some rowdy kids sometimes uh, there was uh, quite a few of them really we would divide into a couple of different classes so there was about I don't know 10 or so kids in, in a class and uh, I uh, I wasn't very good at corralling them you know you got to work with kids in a way, tell them to sit down, be quiet, listen, so that at least they can get the story before you get to the craft or the or whatever's going along with it. And um, I uh, would work with them and I would enjoy it, but I realized that I could never be a classroom teacher. I could never have 30 kids that I was corralling all at one time and trying to get to where they could learn a little something. And bless their hearts, they came there once a week, of course, but they came there after school, and they've been sitting there all day long, so no wonder. I mean, I'm not like my mom who could talk and people just listen to her, the kids, 
my brother and I just, she talked and we listened. You should have seen it one time when she had laryngitis. It wasn't a pretty sight. But she could always, she could always just speak, even very calmly and nicely. And, you know, we would listen. And I, I always thought she'd be a good dog trainer for the same reason. But that's not me. <laughs> But I was working with the kids, and there were two questions. There were, there were actually more than two questions, but I decided I would try to tackle two. And I was telling them the story of Simeon. And the first question was, who was Simeon? And one group, that's as far as we got. We went on with the craft. <laughs> but the question is, who was Simeon? And Simeon was uh, someone who was in the temple, and he was looking for the consolation of Israel. The consolation of Israel. You know what it means to console someone, to pat them on the back, to say, you know, it's going to be okay. Things may be hard right now, but it's going to get better. And there's reasons why it's going to get better. That's as far as we got in one class. But the second group of kids, I actually got two, through two questions. I, I let them know who Simeon was. But then the second question was, what did the Holy Spirit say to Simeon. And you see, Simeon was in the temple when Jesus, his parents brought him to be circumcised. And he got a chance, in fact, when he saw him, he said, can I hold him? And he holds him and he tells um, a prophecy about what uh, this baby, this little baby was going to mean to the world. And the Holy Spirit told him, had already told him, you won't die until you see consolation of Israel until you see the Messiah. And so he said, after he held Jesus, he said, I can die in peace now because I have seen the consolation of Israel. I have seen the reason that things are going to get better for us. And Israel, Israel during the time of this scripture was Back from Babylon, they spent a, a bunch of years in Babylon in exile. And they were back in their own country. But the temple hadn't been built yet. The center of their culture, the center of their worship of God hadn't been built yet in this scripture from Isaiah, long before Jesus was born. And the people were wondering, wondering why God is hiding why is he hiding and why is he not powerfully intervening for us like he did when he brought us out of Egypt? And they are calling out to God to tear open the heavens and come down. Do something. Do something spectacular on, the, on our behalf. Like in the days of old, the kinds of things you did back then. They were in need of consolation, the consolation of God's presence. Would God still be with them now that they've come back over to their land again? Would they be with them? Would he be with them in spite of the sin that they had been paying for during their exile over in Babylon? We know that need, don't we? We know it most when we have sinned against someone, when we have done something to endanger our relationships with someone else. We, we know what that need for consolation feels like, that need for comfort. And God need, seems to be hiding because his people haven't called on him. That's why it says he's, he's hiding. They haven't called on him. Do they want a relationship with God or not? One might wonder. The people seem to charge God with a hand in their problem. Because you hid yourself, they say to God. It's because you hid yourself that we transgress. If you hadn't hidden from us, we wouldn't have transgressed, is what they're trying to say to God. Have you ever been in an argument with someone, and that argument 
sent you into your proverbial corners sulking? We are sulking because it's the other person's fault. We're sort of like a kid on a playground. It's your fault. You started it, we complain, like a schoolyard kid. Who started it, we might ask in this situation. Did Israel start it? Or did God start this argument? Is God hiding because his people stop calling on him? Or because they stopped paying him any never mind? Or did Israel really transgress because of God's absence? It's a chicken and the egg kind of thing again. Yet underneath Israel's accusation, their accusation of because you hid yourself we sin, is an acknowledgement of a desperate need for God. We could quibble over all of that, couldn't we? As if it really mattered who was right and who was wrong. But in the end, it really doesn't matter, does it? Remember the arguments that you've been in with your friends, your co-workers, your parents, your spouses, your children, your siblings. In the end, what it comes down to is, do you want this relationship or not? Are you still going to be friends or not? Are you going to stay married or not? Are you going to continue to call this person on their birthday or not? Are you going to keep this job or are you going to shut it, as the old song goes? forgot who sang it, you might remember. Johnny Paycheck. Do Johnny Paycheck, I've just been reminded. <laughs> are you going to keep this job or are you going to shut it? <laughs> who, who will, in the end, pick up the phone and call first? In the end, it really doesn't matter who does. In this scripture, Israel picks up the phone and calls God. Tear open the heavens, Israel says to God, and come down like you did in the past. We want to experience your presence again. Break into our lives like you did in the good old days, you might say. Surprise us. Surprise us again with your mighty acts. It is one of the things we do to console one another. We console one another when we have drifted apart. We remember, we reminisce about when we first met, why we took this job in the first place. We recall, we share the good times we had in the past, why we became friends, why we got married in the very beginning. Sometimes you've got to come back to that after you've lived a little bit with someone. And that's true of God, too. Jesus would call it your first love. Do you remember your first love? Do you remember when you first fell in love with God? He's always been in love with you. This scripture shows that God's relationship with us and us with God is real. It's a real relationship. Israel and God had drifted away from each other. Did they want to get to know one another again? Israel reminded God that he was their father and he was their potter to mold them and shape them. They affirmed who they were we are your people, they said to God. We want to be your people. In the scriptures, we hear Israel's plea to God. And what is God's answer? Are we waiting for that answer? Are we waiting like a spouse who comes back into the living room and is the first to say, I'm sorry. Do we wait for a response? 
I hope that our hearts are waiting, waiting this morning. Advent is a time of waiting. Waiting for that answer. We wait in hope. Hope of a restored and continuing relationship that was even better, that will be even better than it was before. Are we awaiting the consolation of our souls? I'm here to testify that God has answered. He did tear open the heavens and come down. That prayer of Israel so long ago, God answered it. He did tear open the heavens and come down. He came down on Christmas Day. God hidden in human form, an infant human form, to live and to die as we live and die. He is saying, yes, I will still be your God if you will still be my people. He wants to mold us into the blessing that we were always meant to be for his glory. He wants us to know his love. And he wants to prompt us, prompt us to be love for one another as a blessing to the world. As the hymn by Christina Rossetti goes, love came down at Christmas, love all lovely, love divine. Love was born at Christmas, star and angels gave the sign. Will we choose to be his people today? Do our hearts still cry out, tear open the heavens and come down, break into our lives? What would it look like today for God to break into your life? Are you inviting him to do just that? Let us pray. Dear God, it is amazing what you have done. Israel only saw the tip of the iceberg. When you came, Lord, you came and answered our prayers. You came as Jesus. You became one of us to live and to die and to rise again as one of us. And we have that hope this day, Lord. We have the hope of walking with you, of being close with you, of living our lives with you. And how much more joyous that makes this living, a living that never ends. And the opportunity to go out into the world with your consolation, with your consoling, that it's going to be okay, that you are not alone. We can tell the world this. We can be your love in this world. As your son, dear father, was loved to us, born in a manger. Dear Lord, may we continue to be your people. May we become closer to you. Prompt us by your spirit to do just that. In Jesus' name, amen. And we are going to sing verse 3 of Great is Thy Faithfulness on page 140, if you happen to have an animal. If not, the words are on the screen.
couple of places. Uh, I've served two churches, and Audubon and Colfax, and a couple of places that you can send your offerings if you would like. We're still doing the work of the church. We're still getting food to people who are hungry. We're still um, worshiping God every Sunday and uh, doing the work of the church. And uh, let me ask a blessing over what you will and I both will, may send. And I do encourage you to uh, be generous wherever you may be giving, uh, that it's good for your soul to give not just to spend, not just to save, but to give as well, uh, wherever God needs you to do so. These are just two opportunities, and it is needed. Dear Lord, it is um, a challenge and an opportunity to be the church in the middle of a global pandemic in the middle of so many changes happening so quickly that we can't keep up with them. And we still have a message to get out to the world, a message that the one who created them loves them, loves us very, very much. And help us, Lord, to be your people to offer ourselves as partners in all that you are doing in this world. And may these gifts, may they not be excluded from what we might give of ourselves. May we give of our resources too, if we are able. May we give. In Jesus' name, amen. And now I'll offer a benediction for you guys. A benediction is um, a word for going forth out into your lives again after you've uh, been here listening. And um, what to say in a benediction? It's always my question each week. I always say to go, to go out into the world and to love and to share and to live your life with God and with one another, even in these socially distanced times. Go to love in your lives. Love and serve the Lord who loves you as well. Go in love.